Now you're ready to start adding and subtracting polynomials. We're done with graphing for a while. Polynomials are, are, as you've seen earlier in your notes, I didn't make a video on this part, but polynomials are a group of terms that are put together. Okay, and when you want to add and subtract these, there's a couple of very basic things you need to do. The first thing you need to do is get rid of the parentheses, because the parentheses stop us from simplifying it. You can get rid of the parentheses using the distributive property. And the other thing that we want to do is we want to combine the like terms. That means that the variables are exactly alike not only in letter, but also in value of the exponent. So you can't put together an x to the second and an x to the fourth. You can only put x to the seconds and x to the seconds together, or y's and y's. The letters have to be identical before you can combine the coefficients or the numbers that are in front. Okay, so let's look at our first example. We have 6x plus 5 plus 3x minus 9. Now, there is a one, an understood one, outside of here when we do this. So when I distribute the one to the 6x and to the 5, it gives me 6x plus 5. And when I distribute this one right here, it gives me a 1 times 3x, it's 3x. Now I'm writing plus 3x because it's positive. And 1 times negative 9 gives me minus 9. Now, if we examine this here for a moment, you'll start to realize right away nothing changed. In essence, when it's a positive, when there's just nothing out there, it's like a positive 1, you just get to drop the parentheses. Now let's combine the like terms. So 6x and 3x, that's 9x. 6 plus 3 is 9 for 9x. 5 and negative 9, when you combine those, is negative 4. So I'm going to write minus 4. Positive 5, negative 9, put them together, negative 4. Okay, so my final answer there is 9x minus 4. You cannot combine those because this has got an x and this doesn't. That's one of the combining like terms. You learned that back in the first or second week of the class. All right, now I have x squared minus 5x plus 4 plus 8x minus 7. We can put the ones on the outside and we can distribute the ones through. But we just saw earlier, if it's just positive 1, it's x squared minus 5x plus 4 that's a positive 8x, so plus 8x minus 7, nothing changes. All right, combine the like terms. Now this is an x squared. Are there any other x squareds in the problem? No, there's nothing to combine it with, so we just rewrite it. Now I have negative 5x and positive 8x. When I combine those, I get positive 3x. And when I combine 4 and negative 7, I get negative 3. So the answer is x squared plus 3x minus 3. Can't I combine the x squareds and the x? No. x squared is different than x. It's a different variable. It's, it's different in that you can't put it together. They're both x's, but you can't combine things that are squared and things that are to the first power. The powers have to be the same before you can combine them. All right, let me circle the 9x minus 4 since that was the answer to the first one. All right, now in the third one, I have a couple of huge polynomials. They each have four terms. But the nice part about them is, is that there's a positive one here and plus, and there's a positive one there, isn't there? In essence, nothing changes on the inside. Now, I am gonna take my eraser, so I don't have to rewrite all of this. Just get rid of the parentheses. I can do that. I'm going to take this plus sign and put it there so that I'm sure I realize that 6 is positive. Okay, so now that I have multiplied by 1, essentially, let's combine like terms. Now, when you look at this, these are written in a pretty strange order. These are not written in descending order. 
most of the time we want to put our answers in descend descending order. That means the highest exponent first down to the lowest exponent. So when I look at this, I've got a 3x to the 4th. Do I have anything else that's x to the 4th? The answer is no. So I'm going to write 3x to the 4th, nothing to combine with that. x to the 3rd, if we work our way down, because 4 was the highest. The 3, the only thing I've got is a negative 4x to the 3rd. So I'm going to write minus 4x to the 3rd. Now, something that some teachers do, and I kind of like this, is after you've done that, you just lightly cross them out. That way you don't get confused and you make sure that you combine every one of your terms. x to the seconds. We have a negative 5x to the second and a positive 6x to the second. We've got two of them there. When I combine negative 5 and positive 6, it's positive 1, isn't it? So since I've used those, now I'm going to write plus x to the second. I didn't put the 1 in front of the x to the second, did I? The 1 is understood. Is it mathematically wrong if we put the 1 there? No, it's not. But we're just not going to put it there because it's acceptable. Matter of fact, it's not really acceptable to put the 1 there. What's, what's accepted practice is no 1's in front of variables. Okay. Negative 6x and positive 7x. When you combine negative 6 and positive 7, same thing. It's a positive 1, though, this time, isn't it? So I'm going to write plus x. And then, oops, let's cross those out. And then last but not least, positive 5 and negative 1. I combine those, and it's positive 4. So there's my answer written in descending order. Okay? A lot of times the instructions will say write your answers in descending order. If the instructions don't say it, you don't technically have to do it, but your instructor is probably going to expect it in that order. So it's a good habit to get into.